Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome. I was thinking the other day about special memories of special events and special adventures that I've gone on in my life and how I try to remember them. Sometimes you can't keep all your memories up in your head, but there are special ways that you can record them. Uh, my granddaughter the other day was recording something that she read about in a book, how to make moon cakes. And she drew a story about that special book and that special memory by drawing pictures and including words as to how you would make moon cakes. She had several pages and then she's going to go back and color the pages. See, she still has one drawing that she needs to put into her book. So making books is a great way to record some special things in your life. I have a photo album. This is about all the dogs I've had. That's the first dog I had. That was Cleo. And this is Cassidy. He was a basset hound. That's another picture of my dog, Cassidy. And this is Lucky. And this is me holding Lucky. Those are special ways to record happy times in your life. This is a picture album of a wedding. This is my daughter's wedding. And I put special pictures of all the special events that occurred on that day. And I can look back at these pictures and remember how wonderful the day was. I have another photo album that I just slipped pictures of, oh, see, I haven't finished this photo album. So I put photographs in there of things that I've done with my family. These are my granddaughters swimming in the background. And these are special friends of mine. And this is my brother and my sister. Lots of different kinds of pictures you can put into an album. Oh, this is a special friend and her new grandbaby. All of those kinds of photographs go into a photo album. Then you can pick it up and enjoy looking at it. Another thing that you can do is make a scrapbook. This I picked up at the store and I'm going to paste special things on each page. I decided that I might paste or tape drawings that my granddaughter has made. That's one of them. This is a special card she made me that might fit on that page. This is a valentine that she made me last year. I'm going to turn the page and maybe put that on a different page with glue or with tape. And then I can keep all those special drawings in one place. That's another drawing that she made. So scrapbooks, photo albums are good ways to keep memories. Another thing is you might have a collection. I have a collection of heart-shaped rocks that I really love. Different walks that I've taken with my friends and family we always look for special things on the beach. And these are heart-shaped rocks that we picked up on our walks. And this rock, I just really love because of all the special lines in it. So I keep them on this tray in a special spot in my house and remember all the good times we had together while we were walking and searching for treasure. Today's book, is about beautiful things that we see in our life. And I hope that maybe you'll decide to make a scrapbook or a photo album or a special book of your own with drawings and words to remember special people or special events. Let's see what this story is all about. 10 beautiful things. 
It's written by Molly Beth Griffin and illustrated by Maribel Lechuga. I wonder what your 10 beautiful things are. You could make a list today of the 10 things that you think are most beautiful. Oh, they're packing. I wonder where they're going. Oh, she has a map. Lily ran her finger across the Iowa map. That's a state in the middle of the country. An X marked Graham's house on an empty patch of land. Lily's new home. She was going to live with Graham. Look at, she's got all her special things with her. Graham's car tires hummed against the pavement. Lily felt the vibration in her hollow chest. Let's try to find 10 beautiful things along the way, Graham said. Here's Graham and here's all their suitcases. Looks like they're leaving the city. Lily turned her eyes to the window. There's nothing beautiful here, she said. She struggled to fold the map, so it nestled into itself just right. You'd be surprised what we'll see along the way, said Graham. And sure enough, at the very moment, the sun broke over the long horizon. It was the most beautiful sunrise. Lily gasps. There's number one, Graham, she said. Right you are, Lily, said Graham. It truly is a beautiful thing. Sunrise is just gorgeous. You can get up early enough to see sunrise. Maybe this weekend you'll try it. Fence posts rushed past. Graham flipped on the radio, trying to fill the silence. Lily felt the complaint starting in her belly again, coming up to her throat and nearly out of her mouth. But then Graham shouted, I see number two. I wonder what it is. <gasps> wow, a wind farm had sprouted in the field beside the freeway. Spinning wind build blades, gleamed in the morning sun. And look at how beautiful those clouds are in the sky. It's interesting. Lily concentrated on the game and found number three very fast. A red winged blackbird perched on a swaying stalk of last year's corn. It was dark and bright all at once and its beak was wide open in song. They couldn't hear it, but they could imagine what it sounded like. Number three. Later, Graham signaled and turned the car onto a smaller road. Two more highways to go, she said. Lily popped a handful of crackers into her mouth but food didn't fill up her hollow places. Graham cracked the window and in rushed air and sound and cold. They crossed a bridge and Graham chose number four. The gurgling sound of the melting creek as they opened the window and listened. Gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. That was a beautiful thing to hear the rushing water Lily dozed off. She woke up when Graham tapped her knee and pointed to a falling apart barn. That's not pretty, said Lily. That can't count. We're not looking for pretty. We want beautiful, Graham said. So it stood, halfway to 10. Number five was a barn that once was that is still standing.
At a rest area, Lily bounced out of the car with grand stretch to stretch their legs and creaky bodies. Lily picked number six. The smell of mud is beautiful, she said. They both inhaled. Graham shut her eyes and nodded slowly. It's earthy and rich, she said. I'd never really noticed before. Lily breathed in the mud smell and focused on just that. It poured itself into some of the empty spaces in her. She's feeling better. Back on the road again, the car seemed smaller. The humming and Lily had stopped, but her legs wanted to sprawl and her stomach was getting queasy. We're on a roll now, Graham said, and she was right about that. Seven and eight were easy. A cloud shaped like a swan. Isn't that amazing? I love to look up at the clouds and see what shapes it has to offer me. And a little brown calf that trotted beside the fence, brand new, along with her mama. That's beautiful. Miles and miles have, miles and miles later, they turned onto their last road and the clouds began to draw close. The sky drew dark, the earth rumbled. Suddenly the air exploded in high flashes, bright clouds traded lightning back and forth showing off. Crack, crack, crack. Number nine, Lily whispered. There was no room for other words. It was truly beautiful. Even in a storm, you can see nature's beauty. The storm took up the whole world and it filled Lily up too. She was here with Graham, and for a whole minute, that was all that mattered. On they drove, almost there, not far now. I wonder what number 10 will be. When they'd been almost there for a long time, Graham braked and eased the car down a crumbling driveway and parked in front of the farmhouse. Here we are, she said. Through the drum of the rain, Lily said, home. But we only made it to nine, Lily said, slumping in her seat. Nope, 10, easy. Graham came around with the umbrella and Lily stepped out of the car. We're 10, Graham said. Lily sank into her familiar hug. None of this was easy. Maybe it would never be easy, but she belonged with Graham now, and she belonged here now. Her home and her Graham were beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this story. I certainly did. See you tomorrow.